so um, now I would like to um, um, uh, hand it over to Nathaniel Beshard, um, who is part of the Polyvent team. Polyvent is a public invention um, project, uh, which is actually supported by public invention. So everything you're seeing here is licensed with a reciprocal license. Go ahead, Nathaniel. Hi, everyone. Does my audio sound good? Everyone can hear me fine? Okay, perfect. All right, so this is our newest prototype of the Polyvent ventilator that we've been developing since the ventilator crisis in March of 2020. Uh, going into this crisis, I mean, I think a lot of teams might share that confusion from the beginning, but over time, we realized that this was a problem that wasn't just an isolated event, and it was something that was going to happen before the COVID pandemic that happens during the COVID pandemic and that will happen before these ventilator shortages aren't really going anywhere. And I think the future does have a place for open source and um, sharing in the ventilator space. So we use in Polyvent, we use a very versatile approach because we want to create um, kind of a reference design, but on top of that also an ecosystem around which you can create a respiration system. So we want to create, we want to enable and empower teams in local regions to create their own tailored ventilators based on our reference design, which is going to be some variant of this after we do some more prototyping. So uh, this allows teams to be able to use their own manufacturing methods, rely on their own supply chains, modify the machine for their own certification needs and for their own environmental and political needs as well. So this really allows very customized ventilators to a region. So you can have, for example, Germany might have a need for long-term ventilators in their hospitals that can be built off of this polyvent reference design. Then you can also have, um, for example, ventilators made for remote regions and use in rainforests and very hostile environments uh, also created based on this reference design and all manner of um, anesthesia ventilators, transport ventilators, really anything that works on some of these base technologies. And that's the kind of infrastructure that we're trying to build over time. Um, so you can see here that this polyvent machine is very modular, so you can not sure how well you can see that, but you just have the bellows here, then a certain uh, gas drive section and um, this electronics module all conveniently split up. So well, mostly for prototyping, but also because all this stuff can be swapped out and this helps for ease of swapping. So we enable this using our versatile electronic system that we've been prototyping since October of last year when we were in Linz. And this allows for ease, ease of swapping for different systems and for teams to put in their own custom electronics. So this ends up really being like the reference design that we talked about, that, um, that uh, design that the manufacturer provides and sometimes even sells. So probably when we start working with local clusters, we will send one of these for free probably like the Vetmon and it just, it's a jumping off point to work with. And if they decide that they do not want to use bellows or want to swap uh, these solenoid valves for stepper driven pinch valves, this design enables that to be done without fully scrapping the whole thing. You can take out a little component and replace it because it's made up of a bunch of different controllers talking to each other together and coordinating which of course will be simplified when it comes to final uh, medical, uh, for final medical use, but is very useful for R&D and prototyping. So of course I have this thing set up. So I'm going to try and do a demo today. So I have the screen set up on the vent mod. that should be the breath output. And I have the ventilator here, vent mod and everything set up. I'm just going to turn this thing on for a bit. All right. 
So you can start seeing the bellows pump. And that uh, loud clicking you hear is the valves switching different types of routes so that you can suck air into the bellows at the right time and push air out. This is also very useful for oxygen mixing system, although that's not yet implemented. Um, I believe you should be able to see some displays coming out in the Vetmon. And of course, I have, I don't really have a test lung on there. We're not quite ready for that, but I can uh, sort of block it up a little, little bit, put a bit of uh, resistance in the system. And I think we should see the pressure go up, although I can't quite see that screen very well. Great. So, yeah, that's so really on the uh, on the upstroke here. You're sucking in oxygen for a portion of the time, and you're sucking in the air for another portion. That's how we control our FiO two. Um, right. And I think that's really most of what there is to talk about within these ten minutes for the technical part of the talk. And well, now I'd like to kind of go over how we got here and. Where we're planning on going. So we started in March of 2020, uh, COVID ventilator crisis. I think everyone was building ventilators at that point, and we were refining and adapting a strategy through a series of hackathons. Sorry, I'm going to turn this thing off. It's quite loud. So we refined through a series of hackathons our design and our team structure, which is probably where uh, what we really focused on, at least in the beginning. Then. We moved, for, uh, we moved forward, uh, won the EU versus virus hackathon and worked on our prototyping during the summer where we really got better and better at organizing because we want to do an end-to-end -end volunteer based structure and sometimes and have input from different people and really have a fully open process. I mean, of course, with proper validation and everything from medical professionals when you're talking about the Main repo and everything, but yeah. So then after the summer, we were invited by the city of Linz to, and we were funded by them to go work in the Grand Garage for two weeks and produce a ventilator that we then, uh, yeah, to produce a ventilator that we then presented to the mayor at the end of the session. We gained a lot of insights from that and really moved forward. And it's actually where we got the idea to produce this new system and really we've been refining our idea this entire time. Uh, now today we are trying to start building our ventilators in local clusters. So we have this one set up in Canada and we have one that's just start, uh, that's starting to progress in Germany and we will be producing one in India quite soon. And this is really to test out our, our local cluster approach and really get the whole team working smoothly together. Then uh, we've also partnered with VentOS and we use the VetMon project, which are all other public invention projects, which have been super helpful and great. Um, yeah. And also a special shout out to the VentMon over here. It's been extremely useful, especially in the last couple of days with fixing things up and moving things around. And I think that's probably one of our most useful tools for ventilation. So. Yeah, thanks for that. Then we're also funded by Public Invention, so just a quick thank you to them. And yeah, I believe that's all I have to say. Thank you, Nathaniel. That's really fantastic. Um, so I would like to point out Nathaniel is 16 years old and is a much better PCB designer than I am. Um, and it's, it's really nice to see a live demo. You know, the videos are very nice, but it's really nice to see a live demo and it's not easy to pull that off. Thank you very much uh, for doing that, Nathaniel. Um, yeah, I, we can't do it. A round of applause for Nathaniel, even though he can't hear it. Uh, thank you very much um, for doing that.